So, John chapter 10. One of my favorite chapters in uh, the Bible. It's fantastic. It's a really great passage uh, to read and to learn from. Um, it follows on from two sections in John's gospel where the Pharisees are questioning Jesus' authority in spite of all the things that they see him uh, teaching and the, the miracles that they see him performing. They're still wondering, who on earth are you? Where are you from? It's, it's a kind of, as I sometimes still get in this area of Ayrshire, I knew your father. My father preached here a lot and was very well known, and somehow that's what, I knew your father. And and it's kind of like, well, if we know where you come from, how can we believe that you're actually something different? And so here's Jesus, and he's, he's trying to explain, and he's trying to let them know who he is. In chapter 8, verse 12, uh, he says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but they will have the light of life. And so, through the gospel, John regularly reminds us that there is a problem because the people are hearing Jesus and they're seeing Jesus, but they have an earthly perspective on everything. But when Jesus is speaking and teaching and doing his miracles, he has a heavenly perspective. So they're coming from different places. So in a sense, it's no wonder that they don't really understand. It's only later when the Holy Spirit has come at Pentecost that they look back at these events and the disciples are able to explain and to interpret and to begin to understand what it was that Jesus was talking about. In chapter, 20, sorry, chapter 8, verse 28, Jesus predicts his death. It's just when the Son of Man is lifted up. But they don't get it. They don't understand. Then in chapter 9, the story of Jesus healing a, a blind man. And he, he rubs mud on his eyes and then sends him to the pool of Siloam. Uh, and, and off he goes and he's healed. And rather than rejoice that the person has been healed, the Pharisees are, are outraged because this happened on a Sabbath. How could he possibly, if he had anything to do with God, do this very thing that was forbidden on the Sabbath? And they were divided because some people said, well, who could do that but God? So there's this question over who Jesus truly is. And then chapter 9 ends with Jesus being questioned by the Pharisees because he said that people who thought they could see were actually blind to the truth. And he says that the Pharisees were guilty because they thought they knew the truth about God, but they couldn't see that Jesus was doing God's work. And then chapter 10 starts with a new image, sheep and a shepherd. And um, in the Middle East, they do it the opposite way around to we do here. When, we, when you're here, we were watching uh, a farmer with his dog and the whistle and all that yesterday, rounding the sheep and getting them in the pen and doing all that stuff. And here, you drive sheep. But in Jesus' day and still over there today, the shepherd walks in front and he has a, a stick that he taps the ground so they can hear and they follow. And he speaks to them. It's an amazing image of God and his people. The version that we read today didn't specifically mention it, but but most of them do. That this image was for the Pharisees. It starts, Jesus said to the Pharisees. Because they were, at that time, the shepherds of God's people. But actually, they were behaving like thieves and robbers. So it's quite a pointed um, example and story. And again, Jesus has that heavenly perspective. He's talking about heaven, and he's talking about us in the future. I have sheep in another fold. That was Gentiles. That's you and me, and I'll bring them in, he said. It's an amazing thing that we can be part of God's family. So he's talking about heaven. And saying that people will get to heaven because they have listened to him and followed him. 
verse, uh, verses 2 and 3, he says, the one who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. The one who guards the door opens it for them. The sheep pen would be a kind of a, an almost complete circle. 